Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Special guest in the building. Very uh, highly requested. Yeah. Interview. For a long time yeah. now. What's happening? Mr. Damon Dash. What's going on? You brought some people with your name? Introduce your, your, your peoples? Um, you know, I got first Gov. He wants to be noticed. I heard the dog in the, under there. Yeah. <laughs> and I got my OG Daniel uh, to my left and to my right. I got Murder Mook. Mm hmm. Now, what's yeah. the murder mook affiliation? I know he's in the movie, but is that what y'all doing other well, things the, too? The, the 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 overall affiliation is the Harlem thing. Mm -hmm. Smoke Dizzle, who's not here, I don't know why. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he was hanging out at DD One Seventy Two. That's the gallery mm -hmm. I had in Tribeca a couple years back, and um, I knew him before he kind of hit it big or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, got to this much success, and um, when we we connected. Uh, he was always trying to bring Murder Mook around because you know he's from Harlem, and right. I'd be like, I'm really because I don't like hanging out with dudes too much that I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, I'm not really trying to know anybody named Murder with the first name Murder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And But we ended up uh, one night at that fish market with ASAP Rocky. And he was there and he came through with the, the car. He got this car that has a lot of personality. And he showed me, we went back to ASAP Rocky's house and he showed me the movie. He was showing everybody, rather the television show on mm -hmm. Fuse. And, you know, I'm about battle rap and that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And something about him was kind of familiar to me, Paul. So he started to come around the gallery and making music and I started doing the movies. And there's a lot of things that he spoke about and him and his, his other friends, like Blackface, the way they spoke and the things they spoke about reminded me of my um, OG, mm -hmm. Daniel. You know, and I hadn't seen Daniel. I'm telling you how I met him right, already. Right. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going yeah. into how I met Daniel. Mm -hmm. So then they started to come around make music and we were doing Los Adas, and there was something that they said that was very distinctive so I started to talk about what I used to do with my old homeboys, and one of my OGs was Daniel. And I was like, y'all don't know Daniel? Mm -hmm. And they were like, uh, Blackface pulled him was like, I think he's talking about Nico. His name D. He might be Daniel. And they showed me the picture, mm -hmm. and it was my OG. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the person that, you know, kind of guided me. Like, a lot of people guided me when I was younger and in the street. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people we have in common that became legends in the street, whether it's for wrong or right reasons. But in those moments, we didn't know that the things we were doing were legendary. Mm -hmm. And he kind of said and did things that taught me how to survive in those extreme environments. And then also I was able to apply it now. And like when things were questioned, like my honor, I would always go back to would the guys that raised me be all right with what I'm doing. And you said mm. you question your honor. What do you mean question your honor? Like if let's say someone offered me a bag of money to do something that I traditionally wouldn't do, mm -hmm. but it'd be like, I need to do it for more money. I'd be like, a Harlem dude wouldn't do that. My homeboys would laugh at me. What would Daniel say? You know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause I know he was somewhere, you know, I hadn't seen him for 25 years. Yeah. But then he came around, it was the same Daniel. You know, he was still up, still had a point of view. Mm -hmm. And I was shooting a scene and he was giving advice to the person shooting the scene. He was so animated. Mm -hmm. uh, Yo governor, stop that man. That's his dog he's talking to, by the way. Yeah, she's crying. Mm -hmm. Like, what's wrong with you? He wants to be with his mother? Then go over there. Go be with Raquel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's bugging. You give I mean, Anyway, so him and I have Anyway, so I put him in the movie. I was like, do the movie. And he was so good at it. Like, literally, when he did his scenes, people quit on the set because they were so scared because he's so authentic. And mm -hmm. we were able to pull from our actual experiences of the people around us and the aggression of the people around us. Right. But still have... Cause we we had the intelligence not to do what everyone was doing. Like you got a choice in the street, you can mm -hmm. survive, but usually there's a paper bag of money that makes you do something that's against that honor code, and that's the thing that gets you jammed up. Compromise yourself. Yeah, and yeah. the things he taught me was don't ever compromise. You know, and it's not just him. He walks around with an OG, right. and that's what Harlem dudes do. Now let me ask you: you, you talk about Harlem a lot. You know, I'm where, from Harlem. Where you're just talking, or mm -hmm. from a long time. How did you? Meet up with Jay Z, who was from Brooklyn, because like you guys, you Clark all Kent, them guys Clark are, Kent. are tight. You really still curious about the Jay Z? Absolutely. People you don't know the story? Curious. Nah, we want you to tell the story. Let me ask you a question. No, this is not. You're not asking <laughs> questions, Jay. We're asking you. People want to know that. Let Let me have, can I know. ask you a question? Because have you never have you never asked this question from me before about Jay Z? I, I have, but I was on a smaller scale. It wasn't as big as the. So wait, let me ask you a question. Now. Do you think everybody knows that question? No, I don't think everybody knows that answer. Do you know the answer? Yeah. What's the answer? No, you tell us the answer. Tell us the you answer how you met. No, it's it's different because we're on a different scale. Is this a Harlem scale. Queens thing? Like Harlem Queens no, don't it's, get along? It's, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> let me ask you a question. Okay, wait, let's be men, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody asks you the same questions 25 times, yeah. maybe 2,500 times, 
Do you still want to talk about the same thing? I, yes or no? No, no. So we, that's just me being human. No, no, I understand. So that. I don't care what platform we're on. No, I, I'm sick of talking about it. Let's a, talk about something else. It's a different platform. I know, but I want to talk about something else. Yeah, but we gonna I'm sick ask of that you question. You don't you I just told you. Next that's question. Okay. That, that's cool. No more Jay Z questions. I answered them all. Well, I want to talk about your. You say your OGs. You talk about your counsel. Like, I always wondered who was your counsel. Like when you would scream on other executives back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like were those the guys you would go to and say, "Yo, was yeah. I wrong for that?" I, I would never. Oh, for screaming on other executives. No, yeah, 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 yeah. They weren't in my life at the time, but I had my crew and I had the people. See, the reason why I would scream is because it would be for me not putting my hands on them. See, the way I was taught, when you putting up money and somebody doesn't do what you say or they owe you money, if you don't put your hands on them, then you can't be outside anymore. So you have to make examples out of people. So the, the yelling and the, the snapping and laughing at people was I was taught to hurt people. But instead, I was also taught a smarter way to get at people. And that's one of the things that Daniel taught me. So like it would be the people that I'd be around and they would be straight real tough. Gotcha. But I could just snap on them. We would snap all day. And instead of me having to kill these with guns, I killed them with jokes. And Daniel's a funny dude, you know, but when it came down to it, my knuckle game's proper. You know in my eyes I'm not f***ing around. You know I'm going to go out all out for what I believe in, but I'd rather laugh at you than shoot you. I'd rather make a, mon a movie. Of I'd rather talk to you disrespectfully than have to punch you in your mouth for disrespecting me. That's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. So that's the, th that's the way I was able to maneuver. So instead of going to get my gun, I was able to use my logic. And, and it's like math. It's, everything is simple math. You ask me a question 25 times just because you want to everyone else to know, I don't care. I'm sick of answering that question, mm -hmm. period. So I don't want to talk about another man all day. I want to talk about other things. You know what I mean? Period. It's no, not, but, men don't want to talk about other men. It bugs me out. Why are men so curious about other men? That makes no sense. I'm, I'm never worried about other men that much. Nah, Let nah, me ask nah. you as a woman. Mm -hmm. Why are men so worried about other men and how much money they got and all this other man stuff? Why? Well, I think part of it is social media. You know what happens. What's that got to do with? No, no. We put up a picture like so you make you know, money Damon from Dash it. here, and a bunch of people will be like, "Ask him this, ask him this," and it so is it's true. A, it's that, a money thing. It is true that people ask the same questions because some people might not have heard the answer. Be one. Person. Everybody heard this answer. Well, no, I, will, I will say this. No, I will say this. Everybody knows no, my history with Jay. Everybody. Everybody. I already said. Listen, listen. Let, let me just say something. Y'all saw my other interview. Mm -hmm. I already told you the reasons why I don't want to talk about that man. You got one of them hats on right now. I told you why. Cause look at the guys right here. Word. I told you why. Get off of that man. Paul, you asked that man. Y'all never asked that him, man no questions about Oh no, about we did, we that definitely we did. What did he answer? He did, he, he seemed like y'all had no You know, I just report. don't want to talk about those days. That was 15 years ago. Now, that's do. still how y'all make money? No, I agree nah, with The that. reason why, listen, if y'all still making money off of old substance, now, how are you going to grow? No, I agree with that. But We're still this, talking but, about Jay. But, I haven't even seen Jay but two times in 15 years. But this is my thing, though. That you did add something new to the conversation when you said you brought up the stuff about Desiree. I didn't that, bring up nothing. I ain't said name. I said, is. look, you still bringing it up. You got the hat on. I told you why I don't want to talk about it. So I don't want to talk about it no more. I'm, you don't understand. See, y'all don't understand what's, what's out there. People go to jail. People get killed for this kind of stuff. I don't play these these, these ghetto games. But you I don't up, do though. this bubble gum. <laughs> I, don't, I told you. Once in has certain friends, we don't even talk about them no more where I'm from. So you think I'm going to get on the camera and keep talking about this thing? I don't know what's going on over there. You got the hat on. You ask them. You calling out names. You call them. Don't okay, use so me to do that. Okay, so you talked about it, so you went to yeah, the other Yeah, move on. Thing. Okay. Now, you, you did talk about, you know, I would say you were the bad guy at one time. Yeah, but that was your job. Now, the reason I'm asking... Nah, I wasn't the bad guy. No, I was the good guy. I was the bad guy to the bad people. Right. Mm. I'm the good guy to the good guys. Right. Trust me. I'm always going to be a bad guy to somebody. At listen, as a listen. Bad guy, if I, I let me ask you a question. If I beat the shit out of you mm -hmm. and you a fucked up dude, you did something bad, but in your mind I fuck you up. Am I a bad guy? If I did something bad? No. Not yeah. at all. To that person that got his ass whipped, I am a bad guy. To the person that got his ass whipped, but to That's what I'm saying. Brother, so but even if I did so something hold on. Bad, so I'm looking at, no, guy. but look, I'm walking around whipping ass. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to say I'm a bad guy. Right, absolutely. Pause. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I didn't say who's ass. <laughs> 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 That's slut <laughs> mentality. That's slut mentality. I say dude. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, all right. Well, anyway, so I'm saying I'm gonna be a bad guy. It's all good guy. Like Batman, they said he was a bad guy, but he was a superhero. Everything that fights, they, they said Jesus was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong? Yeah. Like, what do you get? Right? <coughs> this is a joke I'll be saying, but I made it up. Right? Yeah. What do you get when you have a dinner with a bunch of people that you're guiding and taking care of? What? Hung up on a cross. Because that's what they did to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you've seen men violate God. Mm. So all men gonna violate everybody. Here's a question I have. How come there was no women at the Last Supper? I'm asking you. I don't know. Why? You never thought about that? No, I never did. See, that's the questions I'd be wondering. Maybe they was in the kitchen cooking. Nah, because I don't know what was going on. <laughs> Bottom line is, see, that's why he got violated. Mm. You ain't got no women around watching your back. You're getting violated. Mm. 
Period. The Bible well, is three, the also, Bible is three thousand pages about stories about men violating God. So that's just me saying men are always gonna violate other men. Paul. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep my circle tight and keep more women around me. I don't like dudes that much. They be worried about the wrong. Sh There's also a lot of stories in the Bible where girls I'm got about men the caught picture. up. Though. No matter. I'm talking about the Last Supper. If I'm Jesus and I'm giving jewels and all that, I'm gonna have some girls around. I'm telling you, it ain't gonna be some. You dude. feel like women are more trustworthy than men? One hundred. Because women have estrogen instead of testosterone. That. See, estrogen, testosterone, men should always want to be number one. A man should always want to be, in the, he has nuts. His job is to go make women pregnant and to go take care of his woman, to go eat, to be the champion. So you're supposed to be number one. Like me, us three sitting here, no matter what, he knows he can have this slap. He knows he can have it. Pause. I, in Harlem, we always think we supposed, we supposed to think that. Because that's what real men think. You know, and that's what testosterone breeds. You, that's why you can't hire a bunch of men, they're going to resent you. You know what you get when you give a bunch of men stuff? They resent you for that. They want to kill you because they want to be the boss. If a man doesn't want to be the boss, then he's not a real man. Every real man wants to be a boss. Who do the girls like? The boss. So everyone that, that has girlfriends, they're going to keep their girls away from the boss because he's the most appealing, right? Is that one of the reasons you've had a lot of problems with I don't know why. I'm, I've always been the boss. I don't know. I, those are not problems for me when men don't want to be around. That's better for me. I run into their women other places. It's all right. You know, like when a woman talks bad, when a man talks bad about another dude in front of a woman, that's because he's afraid that the woman likes the other dude. Mm. So the more men or women or men talk about me to their women, the more the women come to me. I love it. So to me, that's the good guy. It's, it's all about perspective. I'm the good guy. My home, have I ever been the bad guy at home? Nah. No, I'm not. No, that's what I'm saying. I've never people been the bad guy. No, no, I've never. I'm always, you know, like if you at war, you're the bad guy to people you're fighting. So whoever looks at me as a bad guy, they're on the wrong end. Of, they're on the wrong team. You, if you're not honorable, if you don't do play things fair, yeah, you better watch the f out because I'm protecting love. You see what I do when I got the rock pause. I give it the platform to my friends, and I always have. While I haven't been around, a lot of people got fat, but all my friends are starving, or the people that I left out there. Everyone's starving. A couple of people are fat. We're taking it back so everybody can eat. Movies, radio, books, everything, fashion, everything. And when we have it, no one's going to have a boss. Everyone's going to be a boss, period. Are there times in business you feel like you haven't been honorable and fair? Never. That you can, I mean, people never. do make mistakes because we're Never, human. I've never not been honorable in business. Y'all keep telling me, every time I hear me not being honorable in business is from a radio show where men talk about men. It's never been from that man telling me in my face it's he has an issue with me. It's not a claim of an artist. It's not a claim. It's never been no social media. Yo, how can a man say social media with a straight face? It's, it's, it's what men do don't on. listen to social media. Yeah, that's what they, that's no, what men don't start. listen to that's social media. A real man doesn't Instagram listen to a rumor. And Twitter. That's why Let me ask you a question. What about Real calm. Real calm. Real calm. Real calm. Does a real man listen to what another man says about another man? Yes or no? I mean, you listen. It's up to you to take it in. Right then. So you have no question. To ask me, I don't give a. F but this is this is the radio business. I don't give a f about like, the radio you business. Fans, you're an artist. I Dave don't Dash give a f about Bro, nothing. Y'all want to box or something? He doesn't want to do that. That's not what he wants to do. But what I'm saying is this. I just think usually it's over money that people. No, it don't be over no money. Because if it was over money, well, how much money? What's money to you? It's all relative. Yeah, I mean it's all relative. But is a hundred thousand dollars money? It's money. Not to me. But you can't do. Not to me. It is money though. It's not to me. It's relative. I can't well, then, do shit with $100,000. My bills are way more than $100,000. I forget all that money talk. That's no, cool. no, no, I'm, I'm asking you a question. No, I'm, I'm trying to prove a point here so you can have a clarity of what y'all should be point. worried about. So you're saying it's I'm all relative you. based okay. on who you are, what money is. Because $100,000 is Now, that's not what I asked you. I asked you, is $100,000 is not to me. It's relative. So let me ask you a question. Would you disrespect me for $100,000? No. Nah. It's not worth disrespecting. It's not nah. worth going to take your friend to court. It's not worth going to a radio station and talking about business. What's worth that kind of, what's worth a real man talking about his business on the radio between another man? What's worth that? Let me ask you from your opinion. For the radio, for how money? much money? No, none. I don't need the money. Exactly. Money is, it's not relevant Exactly. So when a I'm, man I'm comes on the radio and talks need. about money and he don't talk to me, I know that's not the issue. Because if it was really about money, he would have called me. He wouldn't have right. called you. I'm, he know I'm not listening to you. Mm -hmm. How am I listening to you ask me a qu questions about another man money? A real man don't answer those questions. A real man don't ask them. Well, let's talk about you. Do you feel like you get your props as a mogul? I don't man? care. <laughs> <laughs> I take my props. Word. Don't fuck about props. I care. My, yeah, I do get my props. I'm not a mogul. I'm a tycoon. I sell oil. Don't disrespect me and say I do everything everybody else does. And I put up my own money. 
All these so-called moguls y'all talking about, you mm -hmm. name one of them that put their own dough up. You name, a boss, you're only the boss if you put up your own money. If you don't put up your own money, I don't care how much somebody gives you, you're nothing but a supervisor. It's not yours. So how much money can you get paid to not... I, there's no money in this world for someone to pay me so they could call me, so I could call them a boss. That's like calling somebody daddy. That's How can a man call another man, yo, that's my boss? We don't do that. I mean, everybody at some point no, has to have don't. a boss, right? No, not in Harlem. Oh, okay. Put it like this. Because you're somebody's boss. No, I'm not somebody's boss. I, I'm. When I was in the street, mm -hmm. It, and someone wasn't your boss, they gave you an opportunity. Okay. They gave you some work. You go make it, and then you bring it back. You can go buy your own work, you do whatever you want. It's called consignment. So why this can't be all work? This corporate America, we could be using this. you don't this. own it. But, but, you don't own it. Own. but we I'm telling you, no, I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. Question, question, let me ask you a question. Can you give it to your son? Can I give what to my son? Whatever you want to this company, I absolutely positively can. How? Why, because I own shares of this company. You bought them? Yes. What I'm saying is, can your son eat? Is this yours to give the whole company this to you? This whole company is I'm not asking my son's, no. Exactly. It's not mine. But Can, I wait, wait, stop. Listen, listen. That's not my question. If your son needs a job here, can you give it to him? No. No. If your son needs to get some money out the bank from here, some cash flow, can you get it? No. All right. You don't own this. But I can take, the, I can take the money you. from here to invest in no, myself. No, it's not yours. I'm not going to fight for something I don't own. Men don't do that. I don't fight for other n****s. I fight for me. I'm not a doula. I'm not going to build somebody else's company and then take shares so my son can f*** all that. See, no, listen, company, listen, though. what I'm saying. But what about taking I'm the money? You come to work every day. You took the money from Def Jam. Well, I didn't take, wait, stop. Don't say, you're speaking work my work business and you don't know what you're talking about. I ain't take no money from Def Jam. What you talking about? What I mean about? take, I mean they cut you a no, check. No, they didn't cut me a check. We had a formula based on performance and they calculated and we got paid. That's and they will stop. That's not us. That's what we No, no. We, listen, before we, we had Rockefeller. We put up our own money for Rockefeller. Right? Okay. Then we sold half of it. We became partners. So that means no one gave us anything. We were 50-50 partners. We built something and sold it. That doesn't mean you work for somebody. See, they let you believe that. So then what happened was, based on a formula, you know what a formula is? It was profit times a certain number. So if you make this much profit times seven, that's how much your, your number is. Okay. Based on that formula, they bought the rest. That's it. That's not nobody giving me money. I never worked for them. I put I put up way more money than Def Jam put up. Me, Biggs, and Jay put way more money up in, in, into Def Jam. I mean, rather into Rockefeller than Def Jam. All they did was collect our money. What you mean? Why you think Def Jam? They first of all, when we were with Def Jam, they were bought by Universal. How you gonna call Def? How you gonna think someone that's bought by someone could be someone's boss? That's my point. You have to understand what you're doing in business because you got to do what's best for your kids. What's best for your kids? is to put your money into something, distress, go through all of it, so when your child becomes a man, he doesn't have to work for nobody. Right, well, that's the you whole thing. You can just pass it to him. Now, you talk about... So, so, and, so if you're going to work 20 years in a business or 15 years in a business every day over and over again, and your son can't work here whenever he feel like it, you clowning well, to me. I don't want him to work but that's here. That's me. I'm not saying you, if you owned it, wait a second. It. I'm here time I out. I don't need a check That's here. stupid. You should be. Like time movie. out. Rap because nope. he enjoy it, not nope. because he wants nope. a check. You're wrong. I'm here because I'm wrong. I like the check. Wait, wait, time out, time out. Time out, time out. You're lying. I'm not I don't need a check. Before you lose your control, just stay focused. Like you say, do your homework. So listen to me. I work here because I enjoy it. Why don't you listen? I work here for free. Who could work? Would you ever enjoy being a slave? I'm not, it's not a slave. This is what I enjoy. I don't think I it's a slavery DJing. day. Do you have I to come to work today? Do you have a choice? Do you have to ask somebody to when you anything. have to? Yes, you do. I don't. Or I you're fired. Don't. Can somebody tell you fired? I honestly fired? don't. Can somebody <laughs> tell you you fired? Yes or no? Can another man say you're fired? <laughs> Absolutely. No one can tell me that. And I, that's what I, that's priceless to me. But I'm here because I I don't care. You enjoy having a man be able to be fired? Okay, let me ask you a question. So you being selfish. Do you think your son enjoys you calling somebody else a boss? Don't you think your son would rather wake up with you and you could pick him up from school instead of having to do a nine to five? I pick don't you think? Every day. Yeah, all right, but don't I you have to wake up? Day. It's four in the morning. Don't you think your son would love if his name was up there, Dash or whatever your last name is instead of somebody else's? It's my Casey, pride is in my children. But like, look what, what I'm doing right bad? now. Look at my son. I taught my son never to have a boss. He's 23. He owns a restaurant. He has cookies. He has equity. He busts his ass so he can pass it on to his son. If that's not what you're hustling for, you're selfish. 
Well, you keep saying I. I'm worried about my kids. You worried about you. My kids are good. How they my good? Kids Your kids good. aren't going to be kids. I feel like I'm in the Def Jam boardroom and backstage. Their kids, they're not supposed to work. I'm saying when they men, you're supposed to pass them something. You're working for another man. They're worried about their See, to me, this is what we're See, this is the conversation. I feel like I'm in Def Jam boardroom. This is not backstage. Everybody cool out for a second. But Dan, I will ask you this question. Ask your business, man. Absolutely. What's wrong Trump with taking man, the money from here and investing it into your, into other chips. stuff that we own? Nothing. Nothing at all. Thank you. Everybody you, you, eat a cookie. Listen, cool out for a second. I'm not okay. mad. The mentality <laughs> is this. It's frustrating. Because you're on the radio and this message is crazy to me. You're saying because you enjoy music or being a, a DJ, you enjoy having a boss. If you enjoy being a DJ, just why don't you own your own radio station and then DJ for your own radio station so your son can just get on anytime he wants. That's all I'm saying. But it's steps you, to you it, enjoy, though. Yeah, no, there's no steps to it because I do it. See, you enjoy the safety and the security of a job every day. But there's no pride in that to me. My son heck, takes pride. My kids take pride in the fact that I have dash motors. And because I have that, my son said, I'm not going to ever have a boss. His mentality is different. It's just about changing mentality. Now, let me ask you a question. There's millions of people out there that don't have that opportunity and they all have, have the opportunity. a boss every day. So you're basically saying because they have a boss, there's no pride in it? I think because people on the radio tell people it's okay to have a boss. They don't understand that they can have more. And because of the direct-to-consumer relationship, the internet, there's no excuse. So when I make a movie like Los Sides, I don't have to ask if I could put Daniel in a movie. I just do it. I had to ask if I could put... Wait, wait, hold on. I had to ask if I could put Cameron in and pay the full. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't have to ask no more. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's pride in that. It's just a pride you should have in ownership. There so how do you get to that platform? How do you get to the platform? By putting the... your own money up and investing in yourself. That's it. You flip. And getting a good woman and stop trusting dudes and stop worrying about other people's pockets and what other people have and what other people can do for you. And nine to fives aren't good because you look, you're hustling for a weekend. But when you do something that's for yourself and your family, it never feels like work. I hustle for my, I hustle for my last name. I don't hustle for my first. The now, dash a, name, when, listen, my, again, when my grandfather died, he looked at me and he knew that dash is always going to be there, at least for the next couple of generations, either through me, my son, or, or my son's son. It's a mentality. I want to have generations of this. What if your kids aren't as strong as you? Mm -hmm. What if your kids' kids aren't as strong as you? Then what? I mean, that's the reason why we set up the platform so they don't have to do you, anything. You have a boss. But you, but you know what else is interesting, Dave? You have a boss. How can a man say he has a boss and be proud? Well, let's hear what Martin Mook has to say because he wanted to say something. He's been wanting to say something. It's a different I'm mentality. A lot of things. Hold on, I want to say something real quick. Let him talk. But Dash, like, you know, you say you should never worry about a man's pockets, but I vividly remember you clowning people for being broke. No, no. I never clown someone for being broke. I'm clowning them for not spending money. You clown people for not having I know, I know, I know. You never I, heard me I've say, you know, I was talking about, when you, tell me a joke you heard when I said you broke. I've been in the office before tell me, he made fun of people's sneakers, right? sneakers. And, and their clothes and say, Yo, broke. you know how many rich people buy wax sneakers? I just cut <laughs> Kevin Hart up because he wore Uggs. He's a millionaire. <laughs> this was a, this That's was what I'm telling you, it's not about money. Office. You can't yeah. buy taste. No, you can't. All right, so I snap on people for having bad taste. It's not about money. See, so you, your, your approach is different. Your perspective, you see things for a different lens because so you got the, a boss. What was the pop your tags thing? I remember you used to always Because say. I used to pop tags. Because you know what happened was every time I went to the gym, you know, I had brought new clothes when I changed in the gym. So every time I finished, it would be a pile of tags. So I'd be like, look, y'all, I'm popping tags. That's all. What's the problem? Why are you offended? I'm not offended. I don't know. I, I, I Why waste the snap? No, it's no it's no harm. Harm. It's about we have no, we have a different taste level. I, we have different. You different like opinions. a boss? I don't. It's not a matter about having a boss. You yes, it is. In my matter, it is. It doesn't matter to you. In me, it does. Because I have enough investments. I don't. I don't investments. You don't own nothing. You don't own nothing. These investments. You sound smart to somebody dumb. You know what I'm saying? You got a boss. You sound. You have a boss. What are y'all arguing about? Give me a favor though. In the mix of this conversation, don't tell me I sound stupid because now you're disrespecting me. No, you telling me I sound stupid. Okay. Did I say you were stupid? If I did, I'm sorry. But did I say you sound stupid? Yes. Sorry about that. All right. But what were you saying, Mo? All I said, well, all I wanted to say was yeah. that um, since, because I heard somebody mention social media or something like that, but since the emergence, I think, of like a lot of the direct to consumer platforms, like the Instagrams and the Twitter, we, we started the to see a lot, of, a lot of entrepreneurial people out there and a lot of uh, businesses being, you know what I mean, started from, from the, uh, the ground level. We're seeing more and more people, you know, 
making money off Instagram, off of that thing. Uh, so you don't have to sell like gossip anymore. You can do different things. Could you, could you have gotten to that the point that how do you feel? Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about the fact God that you sell it. gossip for a living? <laughs> like you sell gossip. You're a man. How do men sell but gossip? Sell That's for gossip, women. You know? you don't talk about, though, y'all talk about what more. other people say. Every day y'all talking about what you heard. That's gossip. That's women do that, man. That's what women do. I don't listen to your show. Well, I don't want well, to hear about gossip. I be sleep. I'm a boss. I wake up when I want. I don't be up that early. I mean, I think I think there's a variety. Come home that late. There's a variety of things that we talk about on the show. Yeah, you talk about what you told to talk about. You got a boss. No, we have to come up with our own stuff. You get told what to do. No, we don't. No, we definitely don't. Your boss tells you what to do. If I'm a boss, I tell whoever. No, no, no. Your boss, you lying. No, you know what? What's your boss name? What's your boss name? Which one? Oh my God. You proud to we say which of, one? Yeah, we're on 50 I mean, yo, we have a different pro- I mean, it's not your market, markets. you don't own it. Yeah, but, nah, but honestly, if, 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 yeah, if they told yes, us what to talk do. about them, you wouldn't be here. Because people here, yes, that's they like, yo, I get ready. Don't, don't do that. Come. No one never no, said I'm that. No, I'm serious. Your boy said that? Yeah, they said you Call them out. They say you used to work Call them out. Call them out. Nobody likes to work with you. Call them out. Who said it? I'm not going to say it. So you gossip, and that's chatty. Don't tell me nothing unless you're going to call somebody out of us. That's girl to me. But I'm just telling you. Nah, I don't. Listen, men that to me, right? Because I have testosterone, I got nuts. I don't listen to other men's gossip. And a man that gossips to me don't have nuts. So that, that means he has a vagina. It's not gossip, though, because I'm telling it you is what gossip. they said. Tell me who said it. That's, not, that's irrelevant. Nah, then you, then you see where I'm from, you don't do that. If you want to deliver a message... But the point is you're here. Nah, I don't want to hear that. that. It's you lying. You lying. Call out a name or you lying. Call out a name. Be a man and call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. I'm chatty patty. I'm chatty patty. But no chatty patty questions for me, man. (laughs) Ask me a real question, man. Don't tell me what somebody else said. What's the movie, man? The movie's Los Sides. Los (laughs) Sides is (laughs) movie. You can get it at losidesmovie.com. I directed it. Daniel's in it. Smoke Diz is in it. Murder Mook's in it. It's very realistic. I'm very proud of what I've done. The Here, let me, let's take it off me for a second. There is what I, there is one thing I want to bring up that disappointed me. So I do think we should all just stick together. Mm-hmm. Pause. Even I mean, you and Envy? Definitely. Whatever you need culturally. Man, you cool. know, a man is always entitled to have a difference of perspective. Okay. Me and Daniel argue, not argue, we talk on the phone about perspectives loudly, often. Mm-hmm. Same. I hate to talk to you on the phone, then. I'm talking to him, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just being, yeah. I'm not just, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. This is a guy that deserves that kind of conversation because mm-hmm. he's shown it by his actions. But whenever you can get positive advice, you got to take it. You exactly. know what I mean? So it might be hard. You might not want to deal with the controversial conversation, but if it's beneficial and you can learn from it and it elevates you, why not? You know what I mean? Absolutely. I listen and, to everything. Yeah. You might not like it, but you know, listen. Again, a man's allowed to have a perspective. That's why I put, well, if I said you were stupid, that's why I said sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't have the right to disrespect you. And I didn't like the way it felt when you said you being stupid. I'm like, you're not going you're not telling well, me. Well, I apologize to you. And it's cool. Mm-hmm. But my point is what I was saying is we need to You're stupid. not gonna apologize to him just in case. I said, he did. Yeah, oh, but he are you listening to your own show? Okay. What are you listening to? It's right all over you the place. You don't even have man. headphones on, man. Neither do you. You had to type. Now listen. Um my problem was this. We have to stick together. And I'm sick of us as a culture not sticking together. So mm-hmm. I'm going to call somebody out from my culture. I'm calling out Spike Lee. Um, he's doing the same thing I'm doing, like the Vimeo. Mm-hmm. And I had my uh, local high yellow, Gabron Gaddison. You know, he does all the technology. Mm-hmm. He went and reached out to him and talked to him and asked him, like, we should link up and just talk. And he was like, you know, Damon's arrogant. And he didn't want to offer no help. He didn't want to sit down with me. And I just didn't appreciate that. And I just want somebody to ask Spike Lee why he don't want to stick together. Pause. Like why he don't think I deserve a conversation. And what, what, when have I ever been arrogant with him? And how can you not be successful if you're not confident in what you do? But why we don't stick together? Like why is the first thing he would bring up is a fault of mine as opposed to, you know what I mean? Like he's a great man. I would want him to say something good about me. So I'm only airing it out in public because I want it to be spoken about. So it is re- sometimes it's, it's just, reasons to call out other men or talk about other men. Well, it's a direct experience I'm having. Okay. And I called his name out. Mm-hmm. So you're going to tell me somebody says something and not tell me who said it, you chatty patty. I'm just listening. I'm listening. Well, you was chatty patty. And learning. Okay. So you, you've okay. had experiences with Spike Lee in the past? Where he had no, I have no experience with him at all, never... but what's up at the Nick game? And he came by my gallery once, but I don't think he came by on purpose. And once he found out, he broke out. He didn't hang out or nothing. And I'd just be like, yo, it would look cooler if we came through together. You know, if he did something and he taught me and I could say Spike Lee, I would rather my honest experience 
with another black man be positive mm -hmm. as opposed to it being like, damn, I reached out to just talk. Like, I thought maybe I could help him. He's still raising money. He's Kickstarter. I put up my own money. Mm -hmm. He has a boss. No disrespect. Mm -hmm. And to the millions that have him. No, but my point is, I just want somebody to call out Spike Lee and ask him why that day he said that and why he didn't want to have a conversation with another man, black man that reached out for help. So I thought maybe he could give me some guidance and we could link up. I ju it just hurt my feelings. You don't think and also, I wanted to bring up, <laughs> here are the cookies, and I wanted to wait till we were on the radio to give them to you. But here's some cookies. Thank you. So got some. Nice. Thank so you, sir. You got some already. Yes, you want, you, trust me. You want Where's the Do you know that, um, the reason why you're wearing them angels on your neck? The reason I'm wearing them? Mm -hmm. For my kids. It represents my kids. But you, you mean this, the style. Okay. Do you know who did that first? You Jesus? Did? No, me. Oh. Really? Yeah, ask Kanye. See, what happened was, I get the angels made of my kids. I went to Jacob the jeweler. Mm -hmm. And then I was wearing the angel, and then Kanye was like, yo, I want to get an angel. And then I gave him my angel, and he was like, yo, I'm going to give it back one day. He didn't, but whatever, he forgets that one. I saw it. But then, and then everyone else, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's funny how sometimes you don't even know that that got designed by me. Mm -hmm. I designed what's on your neck. What represents your kids mm -hmm. is because I inspired that thought. Mm -hmm. I made them to represent my kids, and you're wearing two of those on your neck. And I can show you the original one made. Mm -hmm. And you can ask Kanye or Jacob the jeweler, or any one of them about that story. It's good to see you Thank and Kanye working together again, too, man. Yeah. That's a can, you, can you trust him, though? Because he he's openly admitted well, he was disloyal. My thing about trust is you can't trust anybody. So you don't put enough into anybody where their disloyalty can hurt you, so there's nothing he can do to hurt me. All he can do is be what he's been. He has a platform, and a lot of people listen to what he say, and as he's had that platform, he's brought, brought me into the equation by saying my name in an honorable way. Mm -hmm. That's worth millions. And well, I appreciate let me, let me just say something here. Let me just put this in real quick. This is Daniel, Pause. by the way. Mm -hmm. Daniel, just, just for the record, <laughs> if you look at my man Dame, right? Because this is what I did the other day. I looked at Dame, and I looked at all the people. I only have to call no names. Mm -hmm. I looked at all the people that started from him, and then they moved on. You know what I mean? Don't that mean a lot? Like, for somebody to be able to bring people, like all the famous people that y'all talked about, the names that y'all talked about, and help get them to another level where they're able to help feed their family and feed other families. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. It ain't about each other tearing each other down no more. Got to look right, at the man. bigger picture. You know what I mean? And that's all he telling y'all. Like when he's screaming at you, talking about you working for somebody, hopefully that'll make you say, you know what? Yo, Charlemagne. Your pretty face, like, you know, <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. Maybe we should go ahead. Maybe it was we should a go ahead between that, and buddy. start our own <laughs> right. joint. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's what it's about. And you think everybody ain't gonna follow y'all, B? Let me ask you a question. Like people mm -hmm. listening, y'all. Would you mind if I was your boss? Um, no. So can I hire you right now? <laughs> if you got the right money, yeah. <laughs> How much would it take for you for you for me to be your boss? To do what? What, what, what do you need? What do you do, do right now? Uh, I do a bomb on on uh, this job. What do you get paid I'm a radio to do? personality. What does your boss pay you to do? Be a radio personality. Talk on air for four, uh, four hours a day. Four hours a day. How much does he pay for that? Do you, how much you going to pay me? How much? Yeah. You get that? Before you do it? For you? Yeah. Could you please stop throwing out numbers? I don't need to be trying to get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be people running up on me. Real people. Real celebrities. Real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Blast off in your Weekday yeah. morning, 6 to 10. I know you said I know you said you said you don't care, but do you think some people don't give you the credit you deserve for your business because it I looks honestly, like by perception the people you were with went up, the Jays and Kanyes and by they they said you was down. I can say this in front of me, everyone gives me my props. All right. So all that I see is the respect in front of me. I don't hear about the disrespect that's not in front of me. See, like I said, people that talk about other people that aren't there are cowards and they're insecure about the lack of things they've done. So why would I just can't worry about that? But when those same people get in front of me, I'm sure I. Every day I'm outside. Every day people give me a handshake and give me my kudos. So I don't walk around getting denied. Mm -hmm. You may read it in the paper, but you got to think about the platforms that are saying the bad things. Those are the corporate platforms. They're trying to take all the attention off one thing, which is me showing everyone how to get money direct to consumer, how to not to have to have a middleman. Like you guys don't need a boss because you've all been here so long. I want to know was Big Al really going to sign the Rockefeller, man? Absolutely. I want to know stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, Big Al was going to sign the Rockefeller. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he was, uh, we were talking about, he was always, you know, like I said, B Big Al was a Harlem dude and he was the first one in Harlem that was really doing it at that level before all of us. So it was like him, Cam, and, uh, and uh, Bloodshed, and, um, 
and and um Mo- and, no, no corn, Children of the Corn. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was trying to think Mace about when Mace up. came around. Like Mace came around a little later, a little later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it was them, and um, you know, yeah. You think and Big then, L would have been one of them ones? No doubt. If he was coming with Rockefeller, no doubt. I mean, Big L was really yeah. There's not no no doubt, no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind. Like you know, Jay Z and Big L battled on 139th Street. How did that go? It was know. a good battle. Yeah, <laughs> Who won? won? Well, you know, I would have to say this. They right? were battled again. Let me say what happened. <laughs> I like that. I like that, like that word. Battle. Yeah. So this is what happened. I came around the block. I had Jay with me. And, you know, Sean Arnold, if you're from Harlem, everyone knows Sean Arnold's a funny dude. He plays ball. He come running up the block. What, Big L? Because we always talking. Big L's on 39th right now. What's good? And I was like, what's good? So Jay was right there. Like, you ready? And I thought that was brave of Jay to be in the middle of Harlem and walk up into a wild block like 139th. This is, you know, back in the day. So, you know, everybody was outside. And 142nd Street is the block I'm from, but they were still with 139th, you mm-hmm. know, because everyone's related. So it was just me and Jay, really. And Jay, they went rap for rap, and Jay didn't get booed. You know what I mean? Like, people were saying it was a close tie. So to me, if you go on somebody else's block and it's a close tie, if you would have did that on his block. On your own you block. So mm-hmm. that's how I gauged it. But in hindsight, you know, I couldn't be objective because I had so much... Like, at the time, everything that Jay was talking about was about what we were doing, you mm-hmm. know? So it was so much passion and what he was saying it was so honest. And, but I knew Big L as well, you know? So it was, you know, you got to remember in the moment, you don't know how legendary things are going to be. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's what I'm saying. Even, like, before the music, like, you, you wouldn't understand that the people that, that raised me, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even understand it now. But in the moment, all these people, I made movies about them. And I, they made documentaries about them. These were all my friends. These are the ideals I came from. So, like, things that are scary to most people aren't scary to me. Because the stuff that people think is scary, I had to had to deal with. Like, we had to deal with some rough stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you didn't have the vision back then? Because you said you didn't I know did if y'all was going to be legendary. Meaning that I had the vision of not being... I didn't know that everyone was going to be legendary around me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Malik Yoba grew up in my, my building. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was going to be It's legendary. all in retrospect when you look back, like, wow, we all... It's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Trust me. But also, like, you know, when you bring up names from the street, like Rich Porter, you know, and things like that I made movies about. Mm-hmm. Like, I was there. Mm-hmm. I made a movie about a personal experience. And when you hear about Cruz from up, the lynch mob, like, I was there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, these are the guys. I knew these guys. Guys write records about these guys, and these were my friends. Mm-hmm. They starting to, The ones that did it honorably are starting to come home. You know? I was at the, um, when we did the screening at the club the other night, um, my man D, Darren, mm-hmm. was there. And he was, like, original lieutenant of the lynch mob mm-hmm. and it was funny because you know he's my man when he was the lieutenant this is me and him were friends we used to switch cars jeeps chains mm-hmm. and he did his time he was the guy that everybody thought was gonna fold and mm-hmm. was was, was gonna cooperate and he didn't so he's telling me about how uh leon's son is a rapper and that they some other who called him out for it the yeah. other rapper rex. rex called them out and they didn't know that he was in the background. I'm like, you're the original lieutenant of the lynch mob and you're at a f-ing rap battle. This mm-hmm. is our conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about that, man. I want to hear your book. It's all public domain, man. I want to know about this. But it's on the rap battles, man. <laughs> he's, he's, he, he did, he's like, what I'm saying is the conversation I want to have with him is one that's going to make him millions, mm-hmm. not one that's going to be more like a chatty conversation. That's not the conversation I want to have with the lieutenant of the lynch mob. So if a man tells... <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about okay, a rap so, battle. So you know if, if that man tells his story... I, that's on public record that he okay. did the time for, right? And there's redemption in it, and it shows that, you know, he got punished for what he did. Also, you have to remember... If he's speaking about other men, that don't make him chatty? He's talking about his own experience. Okay. See, you don't know gotcha. what chatty is. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, And I'm man. trying to tell you, so okay. you don't know. Gotcha. So it's good. I like that you're asking questions. I like that you don't want to be a chatty patty. It's no, good. I don't. So unconsciously <laughs> a chatty patty, and now that you know that you are one, you don't want to be one, and you're asking. I, I respect the question. Okay. So, yeah, if I'm talking to you about my personal experience, no, how can I be a chatty patty? But if I'd be like, yo, such and such said such and such, but I'm not going to tell you who said it, that sounds like a chatty patty. Got you. Yeah. Now, are you and Cameron still opening the restaurant? <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out. Oh, it didn't. Mm. I don't have time. That's a. Uh, I was doing. You know, I do things, businesses for fun, and uh, it was. It didn't. I was. I'm, I, you know, like I'm doing four movies, painting for myself. I moved to L.A. I got the fashion. I got the Rachel Roy. But, you know, I got so many businesses. I just didn't have time to run that because I'd be losing money, mm-hmm. and it was like a complicated situation. So I opened up a couple of days, and then I said it. It was like this is gonna be too much work, and I'm moving. It's in Brooklyn. 
But um, my son opened up a restaurant called Buns in the Meadowlands. Buns. Buns, pause, yeah. <laughs> now, if, if, you're, if you're, I want to, Dave, if you're not in the streets anymore, do you still have to play by the street code in this, in this business? I mean, I think the ideals that you live by is an honor code. That code, yeah. Like, if somebody owes me some money, am I still punching them in his mouth? No, not that code. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have to worry about how other people are perceiving me. So you got to remember in the street, violence is only an end to a means. It means to an end. It's the last form. And mm -hmm. the only reason why is for survival. So, again, in the street, if someone owes you money, then everyone's going to owe you money. If someone smacks you, everyone's going to smack you. It's the only reason why. It's marketing. Like, mm -hmm. cock, here's my, pause, pop. Here's marketing for mm -hmm. never owing me money. Mm -hmm. Or here's marketing for you never have to pay me. Or you could rob me. It's one of the two. And you don't have a choice. So that's why I chose not to be in that business. But my friends that play the game honorably, yeah, I still live by those ideals for sure. Like, let me tell you this. Like, if there's a civilian in the street and they witness a murder and then they tell what they saw, that's not snitching. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I'll be around that person. But if someone sold drugs and they hung out with friends all day long and once they get caught, mm -hmm. they tell on their friends mm -hmm. and take their friends that they really love and they're supposed to be their brothers, mm -hmm. that they knew their kids away from their kids, their wives, all that, just so they don't go to jail. I can't respect nothing about that. And that's what I've been taught. I'm going to always live by those ideals, you know, whether I'm in the street or not. Whether you snitch on me or snitch on somebody else, I'm not f***ing with you, period. And that's how I was taught. And whoever knows that has to respect that. You can't expect me to break these ideals. Like, can I bring a guy that's played the game right for 20 years around someone that didn't? Or someone that hangs out with someone that didn't? No way. You know? What happens, what would, honestly though, if I came around our circle with someone that hangs out or co any kind of way, anywhere near that, because you don't ever know who it is. Like, mm -hmm. it'd be times I'd be with people and then after they'd be like, yo, he's, he's hot, he co -op. I'd be like, damn, I didn't know. Or it's been times I had to be like, yo, that dude snitched on me. Mm -hmm. Like, Blackface put this dude up that I had to, anyway. And I was like, yo, that kid went to court on me. You mm -hmm. know, I gotta take that down. He didn't know. So sometimes you don't know. But yeah, if you're yeah, conscious yeah. of it, All right. If I consciously bought certain, you know, uh, uh, someone that you knew was an informant or was around informants around any one of our circle, how would that be conducted? I mean, you know, it's 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 the way you raise. You know what I mean? It's your morals, and honor and morals is not something you learn. It's something that you taught mostly. You know what I mean? A lot of guys not taught to have honor. They don't know what it's like when you see a guy make an honorable act. You know what I mean? Like you watch somebody say somebody give their life for their family. That's honorable. It's hard to look at, but you say, damn, that's real. You know when you step in front of a bullet for your son or a car coming and you move your son and you get hit? It's like that type of feeling. But it's, you know what I mean? People don't really... It's, it's not easy to be honorable. Yeah, your honor really gets tested though. every day. Only a real man can be honorable. And, we, and real men that are honorable take pride in it. So... I brought somebody from my past. You gonna ask me about my perspective about me? I'm gonna definitely tell you I'm a superhero. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to know about me, ask about what I did or how I was before all this. He could tell you because he knew me when I was 16, <coughs> 17. You understand what I'm saying? The, I, my, my, I'm still with my friends. The, I know him 20 years and got cool with him just because he knew him 20 years. So mm -hmm. we 20 years. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. That's how Harlem does. And when Cam come around. And when smoke come around and anyone else from Harlem comes around, it's expected. We all look out. That's all we do. My block's your block. As long as you ain't messing <coughs> with my paper, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an opportunity. If I got some room, you can go ahead and do what you got to do. But only for a certain circle. And this honor thing, people don't understand it, but it's, a, it's like a, a, a curtain all over the world. And people, you'll know, you'll know them. Like it's, it's, it's like, right? Like you'll bring a certain, and we all know the same people, mm -hmm. and we all related to the same people. And that's who taught me, and that's who I listened to. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I was on the set of Too Honorable. What's Too Honorable? It's a movie, another movie I shot. Okay. The next movie, which I'm getting busy. Mm -hmm. I shot three movies. And big shout out to Smokey Suarez, too, the comedian. I'm about to, uh, I have a movie with him called Mixed Nuts Balls. Um, you remember uh, what happened with Tuffy? And I had to, and, and, and I forgot what it was. But I was getting ready to get mad, and I had mm. the OGs around. So yeah. I didn't have to get mad. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you just told me. I think because he had done something that said some slick shit, and I was his boss. So I'm like, tell him what he just told me. I thought you said you wasn't nobody boss, though. I, never, he, I, I was Tuffy's boss. I fired him. On the okay. movie said I'm a boss. I gotta get, when, when I get into a cab, I'm the cab, drop, cab driver's boss. I'm paying him. Whoever's paying you is your boss at the time. For the amount of time he's paying you, that's your boss. Okay. If somebody paying me right then and there, that's why it's hard for me to do shows. And
Could that mean somebody paying me? I'd be like, I can't. I got to be the promoter too. I just can't have somebody be my boss. So it's Leo Cohen was your boss? Never in life was he my boss. Ever in life. He was never my boss ever. He might have made someone like a chatty patty think that, I'm his, that he was my boss. But he never put up a dollar in his life. He was never a boss of mine. Mm -hmm. He just represented someone else's money. And that's really what makes me mad is when other people from other cultures represent other money, they act like bosses, but they make sure we know they're our boss. So like Joey IE or Joey Amanda, whatever, whatever his name is, mm -hmm. he's the head of black music. Why is a white man the head of black music? And what does that have a black man feel? And what did he do to deserve that? What did Todd Moskowitz do to deserve the right to have a business model with asylum that takes money off of a culture that he doesn't, that he doesn't participate in? How can a guy that can't dance tell someone else what records to sell and how unless it's for his own personal agenda? And then why would people from other cultures tell us what to do, but they can't get no money in their own culture? Did Leo <laughs> Cohen break a rock and roll group that you know of? Mm. Why do more black people know about that white man than white people? Because he was with Jay-Z and you. No, and that's not why. No he, was, he wasn't with nobody. He was a, he was a he thief Def Jam from, uh, from Russell Simmons. That's what he did. And then when they sold Def Jam to Universal, they kept Lior to run the And they let, they had, what's his name? Um, Russell. Russell had nothing to do with Def Jam. That's what he did. There's always some white man in charge of black people. That, and it's always a, a white man that's not even from, and when I say culture, people that are like-minded, like Lior and Todd Moskowitz, they don't even live the culture. They don't listen to rap. When Michael Jackson came on the stage, Lior did not want to go. <clears throat> he didn't care. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, to play devil's advocate, you got white people that work no, for you. No, you're playing devil. How you know who worked for me? You're a chatty patty, man. Stop <laughs> talking about shit you don't know. You don't know <laughs> who works for me, man. How you telling me who worked for me? So, no, it's got to be. I'm, I'm asking, okay, I'm assuming, but, 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 I'm assuming. All right, I'm I'm not, I don't answer chatty patties. Ask me a man question. Do you have white people that work for you, Damon Dash? At times, but on my... <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to get mad at me for asking a legit question? What I said is, no, you told me I did. I mean, I'm assuming. No, you don't assume that, because uh, what I'm saying at times, like, when again, when I'm on a movie set and I'm paying Jonah Schwartz to be my DP and my cinemat cinematographer, mm -hmm. at that moment, he's working for me. But when you want a salary, where you told what to do every day and all that, but I'm saying I'm not mad for being the boss. I didn't say I don't hire people. I'm mad at y'all for having the same job for 25 years. That's what I'm mad at. Like, I can't see how people do the same shit every day and get told what to do every day and have to ask when to go on vacation. I just can't. It doesn't. Guys like us don't do that. See, in the street, you hit a with work and you see him when you see him at, at a certain period of time. It's like, well, however you get it, you get it. You got a structured schedule. You have to be told what to do. Could you do that? What? Got a job? <laughs> you know, I never had one in my life. You? And Daniel went to school. That's me. I'm not saying like, and, and I, I, you know, and if it's nothing wrong with a job though, but you want, you want, you want to get ownership. No, 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 no. This is America, the land of the free. You can be an entrepreneur. Jobs are for lazy people that don't want to invest in themselves. But you got to start you. somewhere, Dave. You've been here for 25 years, John. No, I haven't. Patty. Only been there for four. What are you that's talking too, about? But where else you been doing radio? You just been, you just four years? You four, you been no, no, no. I started in 98 as an All intern. Right. And 98? now I'm constantly working my way up. What? <laughs> you I don't understand. I, oh, I'm on a different planet. See, you understand? It's frustrating because... But you, you act like, your you, you, act like you never worked one. your way up to Yo, a position. You didn't just no, I jump out of the tycoon. I never had a job. Had a job. But you didn't jump out of the tycoon that got the oil Yes, I did. I went and grabbed it. Yes, I flipped. From the womb. Yes, from the womb. I was Dame Dash the day I was born. But you didn't have everything that you have now from the womb, Dame. That's all okay, I'm saying. I, but the way I got it was not by a job. I got it by putting up my own money, and then the more it got. Like, like one day I have a lot of money, and then the next day I don't. You know why? Because I put it all in the street. People don't put it in the street. They don't put their own money up. So you keep saying, yo, you just started. You did. No, dog. I've always flipped. Yeah, but, but you know, some people make money well, Some people, legit. that's not me. Some people make money illegit. I never, the, way, I never, the way I, I flip I never, is legit. Wait a second. Look what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I make a movie, right? Low side is. I put my own money up. I make the movie, and I bag it up in $10 bottles. Mm -hmm. And I sell it. Right. That's it. There's the magic. Now I have a movie company. Because I put up the, the money to make it. And because I'm taking it and putting it out myself as opposed to other people where people could just buy it right now at losadasandmovies.com for $10 and I'm making money. Mm -hmm. So if I sell $25,000, I make $250,000. If I make, if I sell $100,000, how much do I make of $10, you know, if I do $100,000? A million. A lot. 
I'm Bill Hader. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see why. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to college. A lot. But, Actually, but, you're doing really well. But, you ain't got far. You're, you're, you're doing well. But for little Tyrone, as far as Gump over here. <laughs> yeah, little, yeah, Tyrone, yeah. little Tyrone that just got out of school. Couldn't do that. How's he going to get his money? He got to start somewhere. It's PayPal, dog. See? Listen, Look, let's stop. Let me see. Little Tyrone, oh, yeah. Listen. Sell? No, no, stop, 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 stop. Little huh? Tyrone. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, Little, little Tyrone. Tyrone. Why is that the scenario you make? Is the Little Tyrone scenario? Dude, little Tyrone. Let's talk about show, you. Little, what, what about you? Me. When I got out of, out of, when I got okay. out of college, I was, so, I was doing mixtapes. I was a little different. Right, so let me, let's start it. Now, when and you I got, own my own mixtapes. Got stuff. you. You don't own your own mixtapes. You don't <laughs> own the music. Right. See, you're in a fake existence, though. Okay. You think yeah. you own something. You don't own you, you, you're you're start some, somewhere. No, you're you not. Get you're money somewhere somehow. as a different. Listen to me. How do you get money? If I, you want me to We're answer, back stop. again. No, no, no. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Listen. 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 Okay. Listen. I'm going to explain it to you. The difference between me and you is you have a job. You started with a job. You still have a job. Right? How do people start without can, having can a I, job? Can I talk? How about this? As men, let's do the man thing. Okay. I'm going to listen again. I appreciate that. Good. So. You have a job. Did you have a job 10 years ago? Yes. You have a job now? Yes. Right. 10 years ago, I didn't have a job. I started by selling records, but I made the records, and I went through the process of doing it right. So I had ownership in the records. So I never had a job. 10 years later, I still don't have a job. How did you pay for studio time if you didn't have, a, if you didn't have the job? That's what I'm asking you. How did Man, you stop, 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 stop. I'm going to tell you. the life coach ever. Can I stop? I, I you got the explanation because I don't know. How did you want the explanation and you're talking? I'm asking. You're talking. You said ask. I'm asking. But you're not listening. I'm listening. How could you listen and speak at the same time? Go ahead. See? Our perspective on things is different. So what I'm telling you is that was then. Right now, you don't need a studio to make a record. All you need is a computer, which everyone has, Pro Tools and a mic. I haven't made a record in the studio in 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know this. So stop acting like that. Also, you don't need any money for knowledge. The problem is y'all don't take the time to listen. Y'all talk too much about gossip and not about what's going to be. It, it's so easy. It's an internet. So there is no excusing not being able to sell something on Vimeo or PayPal, which is what people do, and have an a, 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 a audience and make money off it. You can flip. So when you make more money off, like I'm not going to hold any money till I have a football team. I'm trying to flip all my money to get to a billion. So once I get to the football team, well, that was easy for you to say. Dog, I just use my own money. And when I don't have it, y'all on the radio talking about me, right? And when I do have it, y'all asking me about other, other that I did, you know, 20 years ago. So you got it right now? No, I don't. I got the movies on the street. I'm never going to have it because as soon as I get it, it goes on the street. I don't put up money. Saving money's for suckers to me. I, I have so much confidence in me that I flip. And 10 years later, and 15 years later, and 20 years later, I'm still a boss, and you still got a job. Now, I'm, you know, wait, maybe you might want to break the cycle. Because what's going to happen now? Your kid going to grow up wanting to be like who? His dad. And what his dad got? An honorable man. What does his dad have? What do you mean? Money in the bank. Stop. <laughs> He's not talking to you. <laughs> what, is his, what, does, what, does, what does his dad have? A job. Everything. Real Your dad, estate. You're not listening to me. Money in the Your bank. father. Wait, everything. listen to I'm me. I'm listening. Answer, you know. I try to answer your question, but, but you're not I... answering my question. You saying what you want? I, you have a job, so your son's gonna want a job. He's gonna think because his daddy has a job, he should have a job. Case in point, I don't have a job. My son Boogie doesn't have a job. Right. That's all. I hustle for my kids. I don't want my kids to ever want to have a job. But if my son wants a job, had there's nothing wrong with my son wanting He's, a job. To me, it is. Could you explain this to me too, Dan? I don't want my son to call him. To me, call another man boss is call another man daddy. Why? It's, not, it's not for men to be told what to do by other men. That's just what Harlem is raised. So, yeah, you could go be calling somebody else boss, a man or whatever, and hustle for some that you can't pass to your son, but use the little money you get from what they get. Because you got to look at the margin. If the radio company's making a billion, shouldn't you be making some of that? Like uh, uh, somewhere near that? It's not. It doesn't make mathematical sense. The people that are spending your money don't wake up this early. I guarantee you they don't go to work four hours a day and break their fucking back for pennies on a dollar. Now, what do you think about people doing things for experience? Like, say, I always do Kanye for making the transition into fashion right. and saying, I'm going to do an internship right. I think that's dope. and get a job and work for somebody right. because I don't know how to do this. Or yeah, he, say your son said, I'm going to have my own, you know, we're opening up our own restaurant, our own store where we sell that, um, these cookies, but I need to go work someplace first so I can learn all the ins and outs of how everything operates. You think that's a smart thing to do? I think being an intern, for me, the best way to learn is to go put your own money up and do it yourself, to be honest. But, like, Kanye is 
a legend and something else. Mm. So in that respect, yeah, you could do that because you know your kids is all right because you were like, there are things like when I do art, I don't collect it for immediate money. It's not going to pay my kids' bills now, but it might pay my grandkids' bills later. You know, mm. there's certain things I do for, like when I did, nah, I, I don't think, I think you have to practice what you want to be. I don't think rehearsing, having being told what to do is, is, is the best way to become a boss. I think the best way to become a boss is to take $20 and go buy something like three shirts and sell them for, for you know, this, for, 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 and make it into 40. And, and, and like I've taught my son Lucky, I have a, the reason why I have a gallery is so a storefront is so that my kid Lucky could sell something but not drugs. So in the summertime, he sits in front of the gallery and sells hats and goes to the store and he learns how it feels to make money on its own. And he knows that he could sell something and make a margin. And then he takes the money that he makes and he has to take me, Ava, and Raquel to eat for the day. So when he stays with me, I make him, he can't eat, we eat cereal, and we can't eat until he sells a certain no, amount I, of hats. I agree with that. I, I think but I, I can't, I but you that. can't do that in someone else's that. store. No, no, I agree with that. Now, I, I look, let me, wait, let me finish. And now with my daughter, same thing. She got to, this is Ava. Mm -hmm. She got to sit there, but it's quick, look what I get to see. I'm sitting out there with her, me and Rocky, and some little punk, you know, little dude come up, like, I don't know what Poppington is, but can I have your number? And I get to yell at the guy. I would never let my dude, my, my, my daughter bring home a, a corny ass dude like you with ashy ankle, like all that. Mm -hmm. And then I get those experiences with her. And I get to see how people taking her serious. Like she gets to see all those things with me. No, I agree. I with have you a with gallery in, in China. So what did I do? I brought Boogie and I brought uh, Ava to China. Mm -hmm. So she's 15, 14 years old. She already been to China. Boogie already DJed in, in China. I brought Rocky, showed her, her art all over in China already. When you own stuff, you can do what you want with it. I got a club. How many parties we threw this week? Like, like three, two, right? Three, I yeah. just came been home a week every day. Screenings in the club just because I own it. Where the when club at? Harlem? Lenora. Okay. Why I got to be Harlem? Because I'm black. Black man came no, to the club out of Harlem. I'm just, just playing. <laughs> I just want a piece crazy. of it. A little piece. It's, it's, it's a nose club. Lenora's is nose club. I want no, a piece. But I agree with that. I think we so that's what I'm saying. should do that. So in, mentality, in so, so I, I agree with so mentality wise, to stop the cycle, do that. to stop the cycle for your kids, yeah, you don't want your kid to think his hero should have a boss. Superman didn't have a boss. Batman didn't have a boss. So I want my kids to look at me like a superhero. How can a superhero be told what to do? Mm -hmm. Are you a superhero to your kid? Absolutely. Not when you, not when your boss is in the room. No, I'm still there. No, you're not. You see, you well, we're gonna be on a, on a different level. But see, because see, there's a difference you're because not. I don't have to. You're I don't not. do anything because half. Man, if y'all don't, yeah, no, it's the truth. But I, I agree it doesn't with make you. Logical sense. Are you gonna put the money that, up though. for Mook to, and Drake to battle? <laughs> you gonna put that together? <laughs> if Drake will step up, we'll, we'll organize it. I'm sure amongst my Harlem friends we could get that up. Right. Of course. It, I, the thing is, I think Mook, I think um, Drake made a fundamental mistake in battling. He challenged Mook. Mm. See, in the street, you can't challenge somebody and take back the challenge. Right. So now that, and this is from what I've heard. So it ain't no disrespect to Drake, but I think he said something on a motion, on a business level, his people told him, yo, you got too much to lose. So what I told uh, Mook was, Drake's not going to battle you until you're richer than him, and that'll be next week. <laughs> okay. Did I not? Yeah. Until Drake has something to lose, he's not going to, I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't advise, it's like, dog, it's like going to a dice game where you got a million in your pocket and it's only $100 between everybody. You know, that's how they're looking at it. Like, you ain't got nothing to he win. He wants to do it, though. He wants to do it, but I think he's being advised not to. But whenever he's ready, like, just how... I, I like the way Floyd did it with Pacquiao. He let everybody talk, and then he actually made sure that it was done correctly by having a direct conversation, no chatty patty ones, mm -hmm. with Pacquiao, and mm -hmm. then it happened. And the timing is right. So when it's time for full... Like, I, would, I almost would prefer them to battle when he has more to lose. Mm -hmm. because, then it's, because right now... If I'm Drake, see, when, when, the way I do when I challenge somebody, I mm -hmm. think I put my eyeballs in their eyeballs, mm -hmm. you know, in their, their skull. So if I'm Drake, I'm like, I'm not battering murder move. Nobody really knows him but people that battle. And if he wins, now I'm, he's the underdog. You never fight the underdog because you have nothing. If he wins, he's Drake. If he loses, now he's the guy that beat Drake. But if Mook is bigger than Drake and they both are making money doing other things, that's a battle. Right. So I don't anticipate... You could talk about it all day, but as a strategic thing, if I was in his camp, I wouldn't advise Drake. To, I would say, yo, stop talking when you're drunk, but let's make money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure that's, I'm sure someone older than him said that based on his actions, but when he's ready, as gentlemen, mm -hmm. I think we should have a battle, and I think it would be just as big as Pacquiao and, mine, uh, and, um, and, and uh, Floyd, but you have to be Pacquiao before you fight Floyd. And technically, Floyd was a little chatty patty because he uh, brought up the fact nah, that Pacquiao may be on steroids. Pacquiao, just like you were saying, <laughs> like, no boss. 
I'm not. I'm Floyd in what I do. <laughs> period. It's like, no, no. Tell him. Okay, stop. You have this more money is, than Floyd. And, it don't matter. Hey, this is this that's is what I, this no, what I do. It's I not this. an argument. It's, it's a perspective. Yeah, wait, we no, do this no. All see, the time. that's for people with love. Right. What I'm saying is. Floyd, no one listened to Floyd till he was rich. Mm -hmm. Floyd wasn't Floyd till Floyd beat um the other Spanish dude. Um, um what's his name? That that Pacquiao mm -hmm. beat. What's his name? Chavez, right? No, no, no. Delahoya. Delahoya. Until Floyd beat, because I, you know, I used to, I, I was the first person to put to sponsor Floyd. I always knew he was going to be great. Mm -hmm. So I used to put Rockwear on him at, at a long time ago. And he used to come to my house and all these kind of things, and we would talk. But no one would pay attention to Floyd till Floyd could had had something to give them. So you're not Floyd until you got money like Floyd or the money a champ had. You're going to have money like Floyd. But Pacquiao, you're not Pacquiao. When I say until you're Pacquiao, Floyd wasn't listening to Pacquiao until Pacquiao beat all these people. Then he became Pacquiao. So you starting as a person that's from the street. You don't have as much money as someone that's successful yet. But they're not going to fight you until you have as much or more than they do. They're not going to fight you until... They have something to gain. Mm -hmm. It's a one-sided situation in this fight right now. To him, he's saying he has an art, a war. He's a, like all day he battles with. Mm -hmm. Like when we on the set, like I'll keep him. Like I don't like him because he always wants to figure it out. And we, you know, that's what we do. And right now for the sport, he's like, I could, I need to show. You know, they, he challenged him, mm -hmm. but Drake's not in it like that. You know, for the sport he wants to do, but Drake's, he's making a lot of money doing shows. If you kill him. He's not gonna make no more money mm -hmm. doing shows. You could fuck his career up like that. So he's not gonna fuck his career up unless it's way Worth more it. on the right. line. But you the killing him, you killing him. On the point I was making though is that I understand, but that's like if I he coming into what I do, right? So what and what I do You the best. You I'm best. the best in what I do. Talk right. skill set. So sets. if he coming in, I don't care what, what kind of money he got. Wait, I agree. Come, but if you, you don't, but what does he care? But, be him for a second. But he should have said nothing. Okay, do so me a favor. if you in my favor. field. Do me a favor. Pretend you him for a second. Stop being you. If you in well, my how, field. But what's he saying? Now, be Drake. And I'm your manager. I can't be Drake. He exactly. think he nicer <laughs> than him with the <laughs> skill set. So, so you can't even think how he's thinking right now. He's not thinking like you. He's thinking like Drake. So you mad at him for thinking not thinking like you. Drake doesn't have a mustache. You do. Because he did you know say something saying? like he don't know if you if you deserve it yet yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but but then after that, not after like Drake. that we was in I'm, we was in Toronto when he said that we I was in Toronto. Where? You know what I'm saying? So when he's I wasn't I wasn't at the actual press event because I went to um the game and all that. But the next day at the joint it was it was a battle at the joint like and I was there he was there and they came to me like yo listen if we could get Drake to do one round right now would you? Now this is with no, no warning, press, no, no nothing. nothing. Right. You yeah, know what I'm ready though, and I'm sure. just like free. Yeah. That's the first thing I'm like, okay. yo, free. I'm like, let me speak to him. You know what I'm saying? So I go speak to him, and he, you know, he's like, yo. That was the picture we saw. No, the picture. That's the, when it first started. Okay, okay. The picture is when it first started. This just happened like a week, two weeks ago. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And he like, yo, um, this is when it almost with the battle almost happened. He just like, yo, um, I'm like, you got rhymes, don't you? You know he had balls waiting for you. Yeah, he, he, he did. He did. I'm like, you, that was I'm, a setup. I'm like, but it's cool though. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got rhymes. I'm like, yo, I ain't really got no rhymes right now for you. Don't know. He like, you know, but you know, he start going this like, you know, I just figured like, what are we even here on this earth for if we can't, you know, we can't. <laughs> that was a setup. Yeah. That so I'm like, you know what? Give me, you I said, give me an hour. Cool. Give me an hour. I'm gonna go come up with some. Trust me. Give me an hour. Now, I, mind you, I was already drinking. For I, be, I was there for five hours. They seen me for five hours already. So then after the hour, I came. They came back. I'm like, yo, tell them it's on. Like, let's do it. So we was. It was. It looked to all possibilities it was about to happen. Like right then and there, spur of the moment. And then five minutes later, they was like, yo, his management was like, no, he can't do it. Yeah, of course. Yo, a, a home dude can't do that. You can't ask somebody for a fair one and back out. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. But again. They from two different places, but I, this this reminds me. This reminds me now. I could tell you about a parallel example mm -hmm. of how I can see the perspective. So when uh, Nas had the ether out, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened, but I was at um, Arizona shooting a Rockwear campaign, and when I landed, I heard Super Ugly. Mm -hmm. When I landed, and I was sick, and I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Because I you didn't that, advise that. I, that, that. I did not say that was all right. So, oh, me and Irv Gotti, Irv Gotti. So I call Irv, and I'm like, Irv, why the f did you, you know, we talking about, you know, all this kind of stuff that we don't do. 
And I wish I could have rewinded it to like, why y'all didn't call me so I could have told you not to do that. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in the moment, an artist who's inspired is gonna, his, he's gonna try to fight, but he must have had somebody there that Jay didn't have that day mm -hmm. because that was the only elbow we really took. That mm -hmm. was the beginning of the end, really, you know, because we were unstoppable before that, but he messed up. But someone should, was there to tell Drake, like, you bugging, this ruined you today, you drinking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone older or smarter than him probably gave him the right advice because I wouldn't advise him. Would you have advised Jay to reply to Ether at all or just leave it at takeover in Ether? Um, see, at the time, I felt like we were winning. You know, because we had done the Michael Jackson thing and we had called him out. So he, he to me, he, he was talking here, say like, our thing, when I battle, when my crew, when I, who I'm with, I like to tell the truth. I don't like to say who says the funniest punchlines. The bottom line is we professionals, so mm -hmm. let's just say true things. So I thought like the stuff that Nas said was dope. Mm -hmm. But I think like he emotionally got a J because he was inviting him to his It was well, a little chatty patty. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, yo, you just got caught up in gossip. You mm -hmm. don't have to answer gossip. If he says something real, like, dang dummy, dang. I thought that was dope because he said my name. Mm -hmm. But everyone knows I'm not dumb. That's mm -hmm. obvious. So I'm not going to reply to that. You know what I mean? I'm going to be happy he said it. So I thought, like, he should let it rock out. That's why he That's why he did it when I wasn't around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought we had played it fair. And I don't care if other people think someone wins. All I care is if I think I won. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I did it right and played the game. So I didn't think it was necessary. You know what I mean? But if he was going to do it, it wouldn't have been like, I wouldn't have chatty patty with you. Mm -hmm. So that's why we lost. You see, when you start with gossip, you end up doing things that aren't honorable and you end up apologizing on the, the radio the next day. But so www, low side of the movie, place. don't forget, <laughs> make sure y'all pick that up. Right. You know what I mean? We losing focus with all this other bubble gum shit, but you know, <laughs> that's why we here. We want to promote it. You know what I mean? Tell about the movie one more time. I mean, the movie is, mm -hmm. you know, it's basically right now we still in progress and it's a lot going on in the movie, but it's, you know, it's about my man Murder Mook. He's from Harlem. He catch a body. You know what I mean? Police looking for him. He can't hustle in Harlem no more. So you have to come down to the Lower East Side. Come down to the Lower East Side. You got a lot of guys. You know, everywhere you got guys. That's not much of a getaway, though. Well, nah, it really is. It's a body. It's a body. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. It really is, though. Like, what, in Harlem. In, in yeah. Harlem. You know, like, leave Harlem. Yeah, so the Lower East Side no, guys, they don't want to see him down and there. And he have to fight to get, you know, to get his proper perspective on the lower east side and his position so everybody is like you know that's like i come to the block i'm not from you know what i mean and everybody like yo we don't want this kid down here we're gonna make sure we you know do whatever we got to do to get him out of here mm -hmm. and in the game of hustling you know what that means they're gonna try to shoot you rob you kill you you know it's just what it was so you know mook he stood tall in the joint like a Harlem dude, you know, like a Brooklyn dude, mm -hmm. or like a Queens dude. Like an and that's dude. another like thing. An all right. that dividing up the boroughs and all that shit is over with. It ain't like my man said a long time ago. It ain't where you from, it's where you at. You know what I mean? And when does your movie man? come out? When the movie come I out? mean, you know, Rock Kim said Rock that a long time ago. So. When does the movie come out? The movie's out. You it's can buy it right out there. Right yeah. So you, you did it in segments, right? Well, the way I'm putting it out to the rest of the world is in segments, but you could buy it in its entirety in segments right now. So I wanted to have that feeling, but then... I'm gonna put it out in another variation in the whole movie theatrically. So basically, my thing is to have a direct to consumer relationship. You know, cut the middleman out completely, mm -hmm. and have at least have my money made back before I put it out the regular way. Before I start, you know, giving up my margin for traffic. But I will put it out. It will be on iTunes. It will be in theaters. It will be on demand. It will do all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But first, the people that I know direct can get it directly from me at losidesthemovie.com. Spell it for them. L O. L O I S A I I said it. I said it. I did it. I did it. L O I S A I D A S. Yeah. The movie.com. When you writing a book, Dave? I'm writing. I also have a book. You know, I have a book called Culture Vultures. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Culture Vultures. I did. Have you ever looked at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, absolutely. So, me and um Kenyana did a book and I've already, it's already written he wrote it we we done with it and I'm also giving it out in different ways so it's going to be an auditory experience as well so right now you can order it from poppingtongroup.com which is like my Netflix and you can order the first chapter of me saying it um um you know of, of like a record and then you'll get the first 5 chapters as a record and you also get it in the visual like a movie and you're also going to get it as a book mm -hmm. but you can get that uh right now pre-order for $5 at Poppington Group. Envy. 
Mm-hmm. And 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 then I'm gonna hire Envy. Dame <laughs> wants to know. I'm gonna hire you. Yo, hold on. You're, There's no way I'm not gonna. Dame wanted to know Envy that mm-hmm. um, how much respect you have for him? Would you, would you um? Oh, yeah, let him get the. Would you let him get the Jordans? Would you let him get the Jordans, or you want to you no, want to keep he, them? Oh yeah. Are we the same size? No, what happened was, yeah, you got, your man's out there, he got the Jordans, right. and he was like, I got only 10s, and Envy got them, so if Envy don't want them, you can have them. I was like, oh, that's my man. I know Envy would pay me the proper respect oh, and let me buy I don't know, maybe before the interview. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely See, I knew he would even buy him. I'm not nice like <laughs> You're his boss, so I'm sure you Not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> but, if I, but if I, I'd rather be, honestly, I, I wouldn't want to be your boss. I'd rather be your partner, and I would rather, like, you us spent. do a book, do a movie, do a doc. You know, I would throw down if you want on a radio show to syndicate that has a new name. Why don't we just, you know, I, I just well, take, you, I, clues, I, I you just was clues take, boss though, right? Yeah. I mean, like I said, shall we stop it? <laughs> I, clue, clue, used, clue used to be clue used to be signed to uh, to uh, Rockefeller, but he had his own career as a DJ. So I wasn't his boss for DJing, but I did cut the check and as representing Rockefeller for the records that we made. You, know, you think so you could the, do for another DJ what you did? Because cool, Clue was like, he went platinum. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, can do, I can make anybody famous. That's easy. Mm. That's easy. You know, because I only deal with honest people that do, you know, I just I just know authenticness and people buy that and I give it a platform. You know what I mean? But like I was saying, if y'all want to do something other than the, what's the name of what you own? My show? No, no, it's the Breakfast Club. You don't own a Breakfast Club. No, we don't. There's no name. There's All right, no name. so you own the no name. And so, so can we have a name and we could do something together? And I'm down. I'll do a movie with y'all. I'll do something with you. You know. And and I was just thinking like Revolt. If Puff owns Revolt, he's from Harlem. That's my channel. So I should no, do what now, I want. Now, okay, maybe I'm being chatty, but I just saw the. Mm-hmm. Uh, You're not the being chatty because you, you asked me a question. Yeah, man. you said cool. that uh, Diddy wouldn't clear. First of all, I don't call be... him Diddy. So I'm, I, 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 don't do I don't know. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Don't he do wouldn't that. clear big to be in the Brooklyn's finest video. Yeah, Puff would not clear. Yeah, he wouldn't clear it. So, so why could you do business with him if he? Because that don't. I didn't seem... say do business. I said I want to use this network. That's oh, okay, okay. <laughs> gotcha. You gotta listen, Chatty Patty. www.lowsideofthemovie. <laughs> This, is, com. this is the longest interview we've ever done on. But I'm Chatty Pat. Asking me questions. <laughs> but hopefully see, it wasn't informative though. Real, you don't even feel the time. No, I was trying saying. to, but you know you, you was asking about got some. You like such and such said such and such. So and such see, and this, such. That's what such I'm such talking such. about with him. See now he got y'all talking about doing your own thing. Yeah, that's what it's about though. You feel me? Empowering each other, even through controversial conversations. But it's not. It's just you know a difference I mean? of perspective. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's all. Like, exactly. Men can have conversations. Absolutely. You ain't got to fight over that. You know Fair what I mean? Like, I didn't just respect. That's why once it was like, oh, you stupid. I was like, but I might have said it. So I was like, my bad. Mm-hmm. And if I did, I you know that's not what I do. But and you offered cookies after I, that. No, I'm getting yeah, his cookies. I know I'm gonna come y'all. I'm like his cookies. They might just get that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's a little know, early for cookies, but I've been munching on them joints. Yeah, we've been crazy. Four, we're good. And yeah. and you know also you know and 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 the respect and the respect that and the respect that I'm always have for y'all is that y'all been in the game so long. So there's mm-hmm. always a, a brothership we gonna have just because I knew you 20 years ago, regardless mm-hmm. of whether we was on the same team. We on the same team because we in hip hop. And my thing is love. It's not about knocking motherfuckers down. It's about helping them get up. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell you your faults, which usually makes people mad. But then I'm going to say, but I'm not only going to tell you, but I'm going to help you get without. Like, you can have this life. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. But let's do something different. You can, Are you allowed to do other things? Absolutely. All right. So, But we are, though. It's not like we're limiting uh, right, limiting but to I'm saying one, with me, What I'm saying is this. I'm not going to just talk. And I'm saying, look, I'll do something with y'all. What y'all want to do? Y'all want to work with me? Or y'all scared? Let's do a deal right now. Let's do it. I'm never scared. Right. What you want to do? Sure. I don't know, Dave. I feel like anything we do it won't be good enough for you. Shady Patty, I'm not asking. What you want to do? What y'all want to do? Let's do it. You want to do we something? We like to do an animated series. Bet. Let's do it. Who in the hell did you call for that idea? Hey, that's a good one, though. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> oh, hey, if it's that's just thinking about that. Just made up. It only name of it. We're going to have a name. I can't do that because that's a verbal yeah, contract. You know <laughs> <laughs> You're not holding me to that. I don't know. Let's talk about it. It's, Let's talk about it. It's the breakfast club. <laughs> 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 this nigga bumped his head somewhere. I don't know what